My favorite job in the whole world was being a beat officer. Going daily to people's homes when they need you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, when you're that comfortable with what you're doing and that satisfied, you don't want to make waves. You don't want to change anything. I've dedicated 27 years to this work as a volunteer. And my wife can tell you, we have nothing. I would love to have a home. I don't. I live in an old 1977 mobile home, single wide. My bride deserves better than that. But we live on my small medical pension, and we don't have hardly anything. But I can't stop. We have the, the, the jury box. We have the ballot box. And then we have the cartridge box. We still have our guns. It might come to violence. I pray not, you know. But we're not going to be slaves. I'm not going to see my nine grandchildren be slaves. You know, I'm just not going to do that, you know. It has never been an American war, small or large, in which access has been so limited. The so-called war on terrorism has created a climate of effective censorship in a land claiming to be the home of free speech. May it have been uh, an inside job? Might these people have gotten help from the inside? Now there's a lot more evidence that suggests it's almost certainly the case. Liz Chain's Final Cut is a 9-11 truth documentary questioning the official government story of 9-11. I've seen it probably 50 times now. I watch it all the time whenever I get time. I'm not on a spiritual quest for the truth. You know, in a sense I am, but it's not a spiritually driven thing, I don't think. It gets kind of confusing. I got it down in my head, though. That's my boat, and the other two boats are my bosses, and they have another boat. You can see the roof of their house way over there. I was originally one of the carpenters that helped build the, the house. When we got done building the house, you know, they offered me a job to stay on as a caretaker. So, you know, it was either go back to Orlando and sit in traffic all day, live out on an island, and take a boat to work. Attention all citizens! We are giving away free DVDs that proves the official government story of 9-11 is a lie and a cover-up. I encourage each and every one of you to take a free DVD home, watch it, and decide for yourself. This is more important than how much Britney Spears' hair sold for on eBay, Dancing with the Stars, or Who's Gonna Be America's Next Idol. Sure can, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I work construction. I've seen controlled Sir, demolition. One, one building, seven. Seven. building 7 was a 47-story yeah. building. And it was damaged because I watched it live. And it, it fell live. in six and a half seconds. Free fall I speed. watched it. I Free saw fall. it. I heard no explosions. When is a controlled oh, demolition? There's, so, there, there's eyewitness what? reports of you, sir. You're I watched it on TV you're live. You're missing four. You're missing four. I didn't see it on TV. Watch this I DVD. I didn't see it live. Don't watch Watch this DVD and listen to the eyewitness testimony I, about explosions going what you're off saying before to the me, first plane what, even hit. What, can, you, can you name me another building that's fallen from fire like that, too, by the way? Any In the he's, world, he's anywhere? The guy that goes I, I don't know any other... Because uh, there is. I don't know... I was a big part of the anti-war movement when the Iraq war started. I marched in Washington with, it was estimated at, you know, 500,000 people. Those politicians probably weren't even in town that day. They couldn't care less that we were there. 9-11 is the justification for everything that's going on, so why not talk about 9-11? I don't believe in aliens. I really could care less who shot John F. Kennedy. Um, I don't give a fuck if we landed on the moon or not. Um, yes, the Holocaust did happen. I've been to Dachau and, and seen that kind of stuff. I truly believe 9-11 was an inside job, and I would like to see the people that, that actually, you know, orchestrated the events that happened that morning, I would like to see those people held accountable, put in jail, you know, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, whether that be the death penalty or life in prison. They need to get one or the other, in my opinion. They were told to go to the convention center. They did. And what I saw there, I've never seen in this country. I saw two gentlemen die in front of me. They were just covered up in their wheelchair. Babies, two babies dehydrated and died. These are the families who listened to the authorities, who followed direction, who believed in the government, and they followed directions. They walked miles, floodwaters up to their chest. 
for a whole day and they follow direction. These are law-abiding citizens who have been left behind. Katrina woke me up and I was living in northwest Arkansas, 18 hours from here. And God had an impact on my life by sending me here and letting me see this. When I got here, there was debris on both sides of the road, like a snowplow, if you can picture a snowplow, coming down the road, and on both sides of the road was debris, chest high, like the snowplow had just plowed it over. And I think FEMA is a complete failure, and the government shouldn't say, trust us with your money, because we're going to help people, because that's the kind of help they get after two and a half years. We feed about five, six hundred meals a day out of here right now for all the volunteers to come down here, help out their fellow American citizens so that FEMA don't have to, because Lord knows they don't know what the hell they're doing. Digging ditches and doing ditches. I can't think of anything I hate worse besides liars, which we'll get into that later. The world definitely changed on 9-11. I think anybody would say that. It, it, when you turn on the news, what is the first thing? What do you hear almost every day? You hear post 9-11, post 9-11, terrorism, 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 9-11, terrorism, Iraq, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, Iraq, Afghanistan, terrorist, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, all these words, all these things I'd never heard until 9-11. I never heard of any of this, any of these people. It's woke me up and it's changed my life and it's made me want to stand for something. And it's made me want to fight for my people. It's made me want to wake other people up to understand what is going on. I, you know, I want people to wake up to the global elite that run this country. I want to see a change on this earth. I mean, you have made a significant commitment, a lifelong commitment to this. Do you remember a moment when you decided to devote your life to this? I mean, was there like a... Was it filmmaking that brought you to it? What brought it? No, that... Waco. People are murderers. I'm sick and tired of hearing your lies when you machine gunned a bunch of men, women, and children. You got a big problem, buddy. You sit over here. I'm not afraid of you guys. I'm a law-abiding citizen, and I'm sick of it. You sit over here, and you talk about how the children huddle in the corner and how the ammunition that they had is what killed them, all the rest of your garbage. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You don't stand up for the Constitution. You stand for zip, not a zero. You, you have no calm of plumb. It's false, my friend. Let me tell you, a lot of people are writing down your names. You can follow people around. You can harass people. You can back up your banks, your buddies. But a revolution of peaceful information is coming. And when it comes time, you people are going to be brought to punishment. If you see somebody when you're out with your cameras who you'd like to ask questions, they're public servants now, officials and authorities and we're civilians, all this military terminology, but they should talk to you, and they should be asked questions, and that's what old muckraking, muckraking reporters 175, even 50 years ago did, is they chased them down. Hey, I got a question. Hey, I want to know about this. We need that again. Congressman Doggett. 
My name is Alex Jones. I'm here to ask you about the Council on Foreign Relations. Sir, shouldn't we abolish the Federal Reserve and the CFR? That's the real reality that none of you will talk about.